Yupa was one of the first synthetic surfaces most people used with alcohol ink, and it continues to be a popular choice for those inks, as well as being a favorite of watercolorists. In today's 5 Minutes of Fun video, it's all about the cute factor as I work with these brand new mini Yupo pads. When I first saw these pads, my immediate reaction was, oh, how cute are they? I mean, the cute factor is off the charts. Like, puppies and kittens are cute because of their small size. These almost ATC-sized pads elicit a similar response. They're priced at $1.99, and once our 15% off everyday discount is applied, your cost is just $1.69 each. Now, would it be less expensive to cut up a larger sheet? Well, of course it would. But then you risk, you have to handle the, the pieces to do that, and you risk getting the oils from your fingers on the surface of the Yupo. And if you've used Yupo, Yupo before, then you know that that's kind of the death knell in terms of getting the inks to bloom in a somewhat predictable pattern. So for me, it's worth it to pay a little bit more to for the convenience of actually having them ready to go and for not having to grunge them up when I'm handling them. So the pads measure two and a half wide by three and three quarters long, so they are that tick longer than ATC size. With that said, once I get through with these, all I did was cut them down before I started to embellish the surface, so it's really quite easy to do. The number of pages is going to vary depending on the weight. So the heavy and the medium both have 10 sheets, and the translucent has 15. Now anything that you do with a larger size piece of Yupa, well of course you can do this on a mini. If I'm creating ATCs, I'm generally going to do that in a series, and so what I did was I arranged these, of course uncolored at the time, like this, on my nonstick craft sheet and then I started to apply color. And that's what I'm going to do now to show you. Since, so since these were done with warm, I'm actually going to go ahead and use cool colors. I have pulled out aqua, lettuce, denim, boysenberry, and eggplant, and on the uh, allies, alloy side, I have foundry, so this obviously will have to be shaken. I have four pieces of Yupo from the mini pads ready to go. I'm just gonna lay them out here. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did a few moments ago when I created these first ones, which is to just start adding color. There's no rhyme, there's no reason, I'm not trying to accomplish anything other than getting some color and pattern on the background. So I'm going to start, let's start with denim, which is not a color I would normally reach for, but what the heck, let's just do it and see what happens. Now you can do drops, and you can see that this blooms like you would expect it to. Uh, let's bring a little bit of boysenberry, see what happens there. Again, I can do drops if I want, or I can kind of shake it out for a, a very much unpredictable kind of application. I think I'm going to bring in some lettuce because this is pretty dark, and I, then I might bring, and see the lettuce is going to be pretty dark too, then I might bring in some of the aqua to lighten it up, and of course I can always come in and I can start misting some alcohol on here if I want. There are a variety of ways to accomplish any one thing with Yupo, as most of you know, having used it probably fairly extensively just get the cap off of my aqua and then I'm just going to put some drops in. Now because Yupo is a, excuse me, because Yupo, because aqua is a light color, it very much pushes when you start to apply it and like anything else, how much do you want to use? It's, you know, it's always kind of a matter of personal taste. For the heck of it, let's bring in a little bit of eggplant and we'll really throw in a different color here. Now the interesting thing about eggplant is that it blooms, if I were doing this on just plain Yupo, it blooms with a pink aura. I don't think that that's going to come into play here, but I thought it would be interesting to mention. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is grab some of the foundry. And remember, these don't have to be beautiful. They just need to be backgrounds. That's all I'm trying to accomplish here. That might have been a little bit more foundry than I wanted, but you know what I like about that? As it blooms and it spreads, it's really lightening the effect from the other colors. So let's bring in a Mr. Bottle. This is my Mr. Bottle with alcohol in it. And rather than mist, I think what I'm going to do is just use the pickup tube and kind of spatter it to see what happens. From here, I probably wouldn't, well, look at how that aqua, aqua worked with the, um, with the foundry. It looks really cool. I think I'm going to come back and put a little bit more of this one in just for the heck of it because I like the light effect that it's causing. Now obviously this is a fairly thick application of inks and foundry so it's going to take a period of time to dry but with that said once it is thoroughly dry it's time to think about creating the next layers. I really do like this. I'm 
was not set to like these colors and I really actually like them quite a lot. So coming back to the next layers, obviously I chose, well let's bring them in. So these are, I'm going to leave these here because they're wet and I don't want to mess them up. These are three of the brand new Zinnies from um, Elena Zinsky Art and manufactured by Paper Artsy. This is 44, 47, and 48, which are the ones that I used here. And then I used some of Tim Holtz's small chat, small talk rather, snarky stickers. But I didn't even bother to color these in. The background is busy enough, and I felt like the white on the black and the white on that background worked really, really well. So super simple to do. As I said, I did trim mine. When you think about other kinds of embellishments, we happen to have Posca pens on sale at 25% off. It's a really good deal and they work beautifully on this. So if I just kind of squeeze this in over here, you can see these, these are thoroughly dry. I mean, they dried a while ago, but you can see how well this is a PC1 MR in black. You can see how well this works in terms of just quickly putting a border on. And one of the other things that I like to do sometimes is kind of fill the border in. Sometimes I like to leave them blank, which is what I did on this group that I'll show, bring back in in a second. But you know, there's plenty of ways that you can embellish borders to make them really interesting. I gotta say, I am really liking this. So borders for me are almost a must. I feel like my, my work is naked without borders. But you can see, plain little bit of marks on there and then some dashes on there or you can do what I started to do here which is to just you know fill that border in in any with a pattern of your choice pretty much so these are the new Yupo minis each is $1.69 after the everyday discount has been applied